Hello everyone. I welcome you all for today's topic on basic electronics, 21 ELN 14 or 24 for the video syllabus. Module 1, Electronic Circuit, Lecture 1. I'm your friend, Madhavas, Assistant Professor, Department of ENC, Gosia College of Engineering. Before going to the detail, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon for further notification or share with your friends. First, let us see the content. What we are going to cover in the electronic circuit. One is power supply, amplifiers, operational amplifiers, oscillators. Today, we'll be concentrating on power supplies. As we are concentrating on the electronic circuit, to run the electronic circuit, we need a very less voltage and a constant DC power supply there. But to the household, we are getting an AC voltage of 220 volts, which is very high. So we need to first convert the AC voltage to the DC and with a very small value required for the electronic circuit. And to perform that, let us see the block diagram, what is required for that. As we can observe here, this is a block diagram for the DC power supply to get a constant DC voltage at the output, where the input for this one is an AC input voltage, which is given to the step down transformer. And this step down transformer, what it does is that it converts from the high voltage to the low AC voltage. And this low AC voltage acts like an input to the rectifier. And from the definition of the rectifier, we can easily say that rectifiers are conversion from AC to the DC. That's alternating current to the direct current there. So the output of the rectifier, we get an unsmooth DC there. Since it's not unsmooth, it's not smooth, we need to convert the smooth DC voltage. So we either connect it smoothing filter or a reserve wire, we call it. And the output of this reserve wire is given to the regulator to maintain the constant DC power supply at the output. So whatever the constant DC supply we are getting here is given to the electronic circuit board there, or even the charger what we are using in a mobile there. So let us see here in detail what is happening in the block diagram. Okay, so if you observe in this step down transformer, this is a transformer symbol what we have, which converts from the high voltage to the low AC voltage. So the rectifiers are different types. And here we are shown the bridge rectifier where the diodes are connected in the bridge format. The output of this bridge network is given to the smoothing filter. So here we making use of a capacitor for filtering it. And this in turn, the output of this one is given to the regulator. We call it as Zener diode or the transistor circuit. So we'll be using here the Zener diode to maintain a constant DC power supply there. So this is the block diagram used for producing the constant DC power supply required for the electronic circuit from the AC voltage what we'll be getting in our household. There. So this is the simple explanation about the power supply as we already seen and explained it here. Now, let us see the rectifiers. As we can observe, the rectifiers definition says that it's converting the AC to the DC. So that's the reason we call it as a rectifiers. A simplest form of rectifier, make use of one diode. And we call that one as halfway rectifier. This circuit shown here, we can observe the transformer input is around 240 volts, which is being stepped down to 12 volts. So where is this 240 very, very high? And we are converted to the low voltage of 12 volts, but this is not constant or uns uh, not smooth. Zone. So first we need to convert it with the help of the functionality of the diode there. As we can see, the output of the load is depends upon the current flowing here. And from the figure, whatever the 12 volts of the secondary transformer is given as an input to the anode connected across the diode here. As the diode D1 becomes the forward bias, the current starts flowing as we can observe here because it creates a closed loop and the current starts flowing from the secondary transformer through the diode and it reaches to the load resistance and we measure the output load across the IL there, RL. During the positive half cycle, this particular diode passes the current. 
and a small drop of 0.6 voltage or 0.7 depending upon the configuration of the diode it gets dropped so during negative half cycle it means what the diode gets reverse bias so diode acts like a switch now and no current flows across the load resistor i need not to flow the current it need to be closed path but since the diode is open so no current flows across the load resistor so during the negative half cycle no current flows across the rl there that's why we call this one as half wave rectifier as we can easily see what i explained it here with the help of a waveforms this is simplest half wave rectifier circuit as you can see the input of a transformer is 240 volts and the output of this one is 12 volts which is given as an input to the diode resistance d1 so during positive half cycle here as we can see it in the waveform okay the diode gets on and the current starts flowing because of the closed loop formed so that's the reason you can see the voltage across rl whatever the input is being given it is been passed and during negative half cycle the diode acts like a switch and it is turned off so here since the switch is open there is no current flow so that is the reason here the second half there is a negative part there is no current across the load resistance or the due to there is no current there is no voltage across the load resistance and since we can see we are passing only the positive half cycle there is no negative half cycle so we call this one as half wave rectifier this is the explanation about half wave rectifier now since we have used without a capacitor connected there it was a smooth circuit now let us connect a capacitor across the load resistance here and we convert it to a smooth one so we call this one as a reservoir capacitor so as we can observe is the same half wave rectifier circuit just a capacitor added across the load rl so what happens here is that during positive half cycle the capacitor c1 gets fully charged and the charge gets stored across the capacitor as this is the function of a capacitor capacitor stores the charge so what happens the current starts flowing through the capacitor so during positive half cycle as we can observe without capacitor with capacitor it gets charged and during negative half cycle diode d1 is switched off so what happens there is no current flowing across the diode there and as you can observe since the load is connected across a capacitor now this capacitor acts like a source and produces a current across the load resistance rl so in the negative half cycle capacitor starts discharging so in this way the load resistance gets a constant voltage so as we can observe a small ripple so practically this is the smooth circuit what we are getting with the help of a capacitor connected across the load resistance so this is the advantage of connecting the reservoir capacitor across the load to produce the smooth waveform across the output now what we are seeing with the reservoir we can just observe with the waveforms here so half wave rectifier connected across the diode with the help of c1 and the load resistance during positive half cycle current flows and during negative half cycle the capacitor produces the current and the load gets the current and the output voltage is maintained constant a small ripple there so this is the use of a capacitor for the half wave rectifier if you have any questions go to the comment section write down your questions i'll reply to your questions or if you like my videos subscribe to my channel click on the bell icon for further notification or share with your friends for their benefits thank you